For their album, OK Computer, the British band Radiohead won such high praise that this more or less sapped all the group's energy. They went through a bad patch, during which they had to put a great effort to bringing about its successor, Kid A. This long-anticipated CD was released in the autumn of last year. Prior to recording the new album, Radiohead toured Europe in a tent. This film includes clips from one of their London concerts, together with a rare interview with singer Tom York. What happened when you came back from the OK Computer Tour? It was a mess. Really bad mess. For quite a while. Personally. Because, basically, I'd find myself in a place that I didn't want to be. Um, ended up in a place that I didn't want to be and didn't recognise myself. Um, and wasn't really interested in what it is that we were supposed to have done. Um, uh, didn't really have uh, much to hold on to, really, in any way. Two years writing block, writing stuff, throwing it away. It's like losing someone you love. I can't really say where it came. It came. The idea was that there was no plan at all. We just had lots of ideas, half-formed ideas, and hoped that some of them would see themselves through. One, two. OK Computer was a very big album. You did a great tour with it. We did a lot of touring, yeah. We did a lot of touring. Did that burn you out, personally? Oh, yeah. I was, I was finished when um, we did Glastonbury. And then a year and a half later, we were still going. And I kept saying, you know, every other day, I don't want to do this. And we were like, oh, we've got to do this, we have to do this, because that way we'll never have to do it again. And I guess that they were right, you know, going Lock yourselves to death, make the most of it. No, no, no. Uh, but it was, it was, I think, unwise. Because we played really badly, because we weren't interested by the end, we weren't listening to each other. If you want the truth. Do, Do you understand, understand why, why an album like OK Computer... People are... Uh, people are very attached to it, I mean. Yeah, I, th I'm, I understand. I, I, you know, I can't... I obviously can't listen to it. But you I, can't? I, well, no, I, I can't, I can't... I, I, I mean, I had to listen to it to try and remember the songs. But, um... I, I can't, I can't do that. I find it really freaks me out. I can't do it. It's Is it because of the music, lyrics? the lyrics? No, or? no, just, uh It kind of sends you back to a place, makes you feel ill. I think once you've finished a record, like, you, you have all the power and the emotions of, of doing it as you're doing it. And when it's finished, that's over, it's, that's it. You know, it's really, it's very difficult then to, to be able to connect with it. Because it's, it's other people's, it's other people's property. And that's a good thing, that's, what, that's how it's supposed to be. And you were considered one of the greatest rock bands in 1997. Well, God help us if we fucking were, because, because you know, as far as we were concerned, the you know, being even being called a rock band was a bit of a a nightmare, really. Why? Because it sucks. Fucking rock music sucks, man. I hate it. 
You know, I'm so just so fucking bored of it. I hate it. It's a fucking waste of time. It's like, it's not really the music. It's not, it's not sitting on a stage playing guitar um, or drums and singing. That, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is all the mythology that goes with it. I have a real fucking problem with that. I have a real problem with the idea that you have to tour yourselves stupid and, you know, do certain things and talk to certain people and this is the way you, you know. I just I totally snapped, had enough of it. I think, I think it's the same as with literature and with art. Like, a lot of the time you confuse the personality with the person, the personality with a piece of work. It ultimately doesn't do anybody any favours. You know, it's it, in a way um, it can it negates the work as well because I think um, what can happen is that, that essentially, um, like if you're an artist like Rothko and you choose to kill yourself, then that colours the work forevermore, which is totally not the point. And and not only that, it destroys the work for anybody. You know, people who um, like uh, there's a Rothko room in the Tate and. London and um, when kids go in there they sort of go wow this is great and all they see is the joy of the colours in the paintings and all the adults see is this poor sod who killed himself So lots of positive sides of your OK computer. Yeah, initially the, the positive stuff was great. Initially, yeah, I agree. But it, it just went for me. It just went wrong in up there. I don't know. Uh, it's like um, being trapped in one um, space, like one point, um, and you can't go backwards and you can't go forwards and you can't go in any direction. You're absolutely trapped in one particular space in time and you cannot move on because I use music to move on to progress through life um, and so when I lost that I lost the ability to progress or anything so you start to lose the ability to interact and it becomes like a vicious circle because you're just like this all the time so you're sitting, so you're sitting there at home all the time doing nothing or is it no you, it's just every time you, you go to, to a piece of music or uh, or read a book, or go for a drive in your car, you're constantly thinking that you're trapped. You're stuck. You're like a full stop, and you'll never be anything else. I think the only way that you deal with it eventually, like, um, is you, 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 you just forget about it. You choose to not have a problem about it. You choose to go and see your friends and go out and get drunk and enjoy so, life and, and, and just forget about it and, and just wait for, wait for it to come back. Did you find a specific reason why you got writer's block? Yeah, it was... It was um, I mean, I didn't really know. I don't think I knew until we actually finished Kid A what it was about or, or, what, or the reason that I'd had such a terrible block. But it was really because um, I had, like... Uh, felt that I had totally lost control of any element of my life, or any element of like anything that 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 I was involved in, uh, uh, and and ultimately being so incredibly angry, it was inexpressible. Uh, and it sort of when we finished the record, I just realised that's what it all been about.
personally totally lost interest in in playing guitar. How come? Uh, um, it just well, okay. It, it just didn't. It just didn't do it for me anymore. But you have three guitarists in the band. Yeah, bummer, eh? I started playing the piano, and I'm a terrible piano player, so that was kind of good. So everything was a novelty. So, and I wrote a lot of stuff on piano, uh, badly. <laughs> but it's good, I mean, in a way, the less you know about an instrument, the more you get excited about it, I think. Uh, apart from not playing guitar, you said, uh, you said you didn't like any guitar music at all. What music were you into at the time? I was like much more into the electronica stuff like Otecra and, and Aphex Twin and lots of stuff on Warp and and I always regretted that we that we somehow in deciding to be a rock band or whatever it was and tore ourselves stupid and turn into little monsters that we'd we'd l lost the chance of ever being able to get into that sort of music and I, that was like a big regret for me because I didn't see it as any different from rock music. From from where I'm sat, it's no different. If it's good, it's good sort of thing, and it's got the same sort of uh, fuck me attitude when it's good.
think what what I find interesting about like taking on the electronic sort of thing, like taking on programming and editing and that, and sampling is that it 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 stops. Uh, it stops you trying to emote, because like you it there's something I find incredibly exciting about just leaving something to run and stand there listening to it, not actually play it at the time and and singing along. I mean, like, the, the other thing um, is that we were all kind of really heavily obsessed. Ever since OK Computer, we've been heavily obsessed by Remain in Light, the Talking Heads album, and the way that they did that, and, and the, uh, the sort of emotions that go with that record that are kind of, like, not... Uh, not just not got the same, like, most emotional range as any other Talking Heads record. It's, like, totally out... From, from over there somewhere. And the other thing was the way that David Byrne was writing the lyrics on that, because he went to that record with no... He had, like, notes and no songs, no songs, just, like, start a rhythm, here's a riff, da-da-da-da, let's keep going. I guess, I, I guess what, I, what, I, what I admired in the Remaining Light thing is that everything is essentially fragments, because he's taking things from notebooks. And so what I sort of went off and tried to do when 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 I couldn't with with the writer's block thing was like just basically have all the things that didn't work and 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 sort of started stop s s stopped uh, throwing them away which is what I'd been doing before like screwing them up and and keeping them and cutting them up and putting them in this top hat and pulling them out and that was really cool because what it did was that I managed to preserve Whatever emotions were it, uh, in the in in the original writing of the words, but in a way that it's like not. I'm not trying to emote. It's just part of what's going on. So like, to, to, so like, they're not printing the words on this record because the words are just part of what's going on. What, what songs, songs are made that way on this? Um, Kid A is, but then yeah. of course you can't know the words. National anthem is. Everything that's right place, idiotech, in limbo. That's at least half. Yeah. Uh, one of them. Oh, and I'm um, optimistic. Yeah. yeah, but the only yeah. one obviously isn't obviously is isn't. how to disappear I'm completely. completely. Yeah, which is kind of quite an old one. Yeah, but then uh, I was I was really I'd, I've always really loved the words for that because I wrote them really really quickly, and, and that was written. Um, you know, just when or everything was firing off on OK Computer. So that was like a, a mantra to get out of it. Or, I'm not here, this is not happening, you know. Yeah, yeah. Lines down, something. Which kept me going for a very long time, really.
strengths that we've, we've always had is, you know, like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll sort of come up with things, but I don't know what they mean. I've got no idea, and the others are really good at knowing what they mean. And that, that means that we can start piecing things together, you see. And we spent a lot of time not seeing each other for a while. And, and I discovered it, doing that that, um, that I have no idea what I'm doing, really. I've not, you know, sort of my, my personal input in things is starting things off a lot of the time, or at least sort of firing off things. But I'm no good at seeing things through. Actually, terrible at it, actually. So that was my big lesson. I guess. How did the relationships between you and the band change during the years? I mean, I, I can't imagine that, that since everything's happened to you, that things have changed. Yeah. In what way? They're better. No. But were there any difficulties in? Yep. in can you be more specific? No. Why not? Because it's our business. I, I have a real problem with people asking that stuff. Because um, it's not anyone's business, really. I can't keep trying to tell the others not to talk about it either, because it's a bad idea. But uh, have you ever uh, had the idea of quitting Radiohead and doing your own stuff on your own? Next question. Do, do you have a problem with these questions? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, it's not your business. It's nobody's business but ours. I mean, um, it's just... just... Well, I mean, I kind of basically said that earlier. It's just like, you know... But I, it's no... It's no... It's like... I do not want to be answering questions on that for the next fucking five years. And if I do, then, then I'll just stop doing interviews again. Because it's a fucking waste of time, really, for everybody concerned. It's just, it's just that Radiohead is one thing. Uh, if we chose, if we choose, if we ch chosen to finish the record and carry on, then then that's kind of all anybody needs to know, really. Yeah. I think. You know what I mean? It's like. Other than that, you're just kind of digging dirt, really.
I don't have any desire to sort of alienate people deliberately. Um, that's kind of... Um, I, 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 I can see... It's good fun. I can see the point. But, um... I, I personally would rather be able to communicate with people. I guess being a singer, there ain't no way around that, really, you know? And it's, that's actually the best thing. I think doing touring again made me realise there was this massive gap that I deliberately sort of switched off, thinking it was not relevant or important to me. And then suddenly, aha, you know, you can sleep all right at night again, because you sort of understand that that's what you're supposed to do. So, so that, I guess, means that, that, that I, you know, I still want us to be part of what is essentially the high street or the music, the pop music industry. I mean, ever since art college, I've really had a problem with doing a piece of work and then putting it in a huge empty white room so that posh people can drink wine and think about buying it or not. It just doesn't do anybody any fucking good, really. And, and that's what I've always thought pop music was, will always be a far more vibrant art, art form, ultimately, because, like, when you hear something on the radio, you know, that triggers something in you, that it, you, you're never the same again. Uh, and, and it's harder to do that in, in a gallery. <laughs> decision to go on tour again. I can imagine you never wanted to play or wanted to perform again in front of a live audience. How...? Um, it was the others. I think, actually, ultimately, if I'd been left to it, I wouldn't have done. And the others were like, go on, it'd be great, you'll really like it. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I had the real horrors about, you know, the, the tent thing and everything. I just thought we were just crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think was, was that your idea, the yeah. tent, the tent yeah. thing? No, 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 it wasn't, no, not at all. I thought it was a good idea because it sounded really bloody-minded, but I never actually thought it would happen. <laughs> and then it did, and, like, people bought tickets. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I have to actually do this now. And you're enjoying it so far? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it, actually. Amazing. It's 